If we want to understand and appreciate a complicated watch like the Academy Georges Favre Jacot, the anniversary piece from Zenith with its fusée and chain system, we should start where the watch was born, which is to say with the movement constructor. Now in French, the word constructor means designer, and I'm with the designer of the system of the fusée and chain for the Georges Favre Jacot watch, and he's going to explain to us how the fusée and chain work together to deliver constant force for the watch. But we're going to go deeper because there are other issues that have to be confronted when you build a system like this. How do you protect the chain when you're winding the watch? How do you keep the watch running when you're winding the watch? All of these things we're going to learn with the man who designed this system for Zenith. Perhaps we can begin by identifying the main components, the barrel, the fusée, and the chain. Yes, so we have the barrel, which has the mainspring. That's the mainspring. Yes, the mainspring. Next we have the fusée, and between the two we have the chain. The chain pulls the fusée as the barrel unwinds. Here is the position with the maximum state of wind. So the barrel is fully wound at this moment. Exactly. And it pulls the fusée at the point of the smallest diameter. Exactly. So you can imagine this system like a bicycle derailleur. Exactly like a rear derailleur on a bicycle that changes the gears automatically. Now, with the barrel fully wound, it's in high gear. Yes, exactly. And when the barrel unwinds, what happens? When the barrel unwinds, it pulls on the chain, which turns the fusée. It unwinds from the fusée following its sloped form, and that changes the effective radius of the chain. When the mainspring is weaker, that is, when it's nearly completely unwound, it pulls from the bottom. From the bottom, with a large effective radius, which compensates for the drop in force to regulate the force of the barrel. That is to say, low gear. With 50 hours power reserve, you see a straight line of force instead of a force that drops according to the depletion of the barrel you see a straight line until the end when it fully drops. So this shows the classic system for all watches. All watches. Hour, minute, the same gear train. And next we have the seconds wheel on which we've placed the axis for the hand. And for the winding. The winding is done by the crown. Oui. That's classic for a watch. Exactly. And when one turns the crown through the gear system, that turns the fusée. La fusée. Yes, and the fusée will pull the chain, which will rewind the mainspring in the inside of the barrel. What happens when the barrel is fully wound? When the barrel is full, which is the position shown, the chain will push on this ratchet. And that will put it in contact with this pin, and this pin will stop any further winding. So the chain, which is quite fragile, is protected in this way by the system. Exactly. And while one is winding the watch, there is a system to keep the watch running. This wheel here is independent from the fusée and covered by it. When winding takes place, this wheel is connected to this gear which stops the system via a ratchet. And that permits this spring to discharge its energy to run the movement. Can you give a color to this spring which keeps the watch running? Yes. The green is the spring we've been talking about. Exactly. And we have done the calculation so that the spring gives the same force as the barrel would 
for a half hour. The spring unwinds, moving five degrees. En contact avec la fin du trouble. That gives 30 minutes of running with the same force as the barrel. Et là, on va avoir la force équivalente à la force du ressort. Personne n'a pas besoin. Nobody needs a half hour to wind the watch. That's enough. One would think so. 30 minutes is enough for everybody. Charge maximum, ça suffit largement pour faire tout le remontage. That should do it for everybody. Une demi-heure pour faire le remontage. Oui, effectivement.